ovarian cysts this is a diagrammatic representation of a female genital tract this is the right ovary and this is the left ovary the ovary consists of several parts the covering is called the epithelium the central part is called the stroma and there are cells in the center called the germ cells which produce the eggs cysts can form from any part of the ovary an ovarian cyst is a sac or pouch that develops in the ovary the cyst may contain liquid or solid material or a combination of both the fluid within the cyst can range from thin and watery to thick and paste like the wall that covers the cyst can be thin or thick ovarian cysts are very common particularly in women between the ages of 30 and 60 They may be single or multiple and can occur in one or both ovaries. Most are benign, but a small percentage are cancerous. There are several different kinds of ovarian cysts which are categorized as either functional cysts or pathological cysts. Functional cysts are the most common type. They are harmless and form as part of the menstrual cycle. There are two types of functional cysts namely follicular cyst and luteal cyst. Follicular cysts are the most commonly seen ovarian cysts. During the early part of the menstrual cycle a follicle develops in the ovary. The follicle contains fluid to protect the egg as it grows. During ovulation it bursts and releases an egg. After that the follicle becomes a corpus luteum and shrinks. Sometimes a follicle does not release an egg and does not shed its fluid. If this happens the follicle can get bigger as it swells with fluid. This becomes a follicular ovarian cyst. Usually only one cyst appears at a time. Sometimes more than one follicular cyst may be present if medication to induce ovulation are taken it normally goes away without treatment after a few weeks luteal cysts are less common they develop when the tissue that is left behind after an egg has been released called the corpus luteum fills with blood luteal cysts usually disappear on their own within a few months but can sometimes rupture causing internal bleeding and sudden pain. Cysts can develop from different parts of the ovary. The commonest cysts that develop from the germ cells that forms the eggs are the dermoid cysts. The commonest cysts that develop from the epithelium is called cyst adenoma. Cysts can develop from the stromal layer as well, but they are rare. In women under the age of 30, dermoid cysts are the most common type of pathological cyst. Past the age of 40, tumors called cyst adenomas are the most common type of pathological cyst. Dermoid cysts tend to occur in younger women. These cysts are present at birth but are not noticed until adulthood. They can grow quite large up to 15 cm across. Dermoid cysts often contain odd contents such as hair, parts of teeth or bone, fatty tissue. This is because these cysts develop from the ovary's germ cells which make eggs in the ovary. These cells have the potential to develop into any type of cell and so can make different type of tissue. In about 1 in 10 cases a dermoid cyst develops in both ovaries. Dermoid cysts can run in families. In rare occasions they could be malignant or cancerous. Dermoid cysts may need to be surgically removed. Dermoid cysts can be removed by laparoscopy. Cyst adenomas develop from cells that cover the outer part of the ovary called the epithelium. Cyst adenomas are often attached 
to an ovary by a stalk rather than growing inside the ovary itself, which means they can grow to a large size. They are not normally cancerous, but need to be surgically removed. There are two types of cyst adenomas, namely serous and mucinous. A serous cyst adenoma is filled with thin, watery fluid. A mucinous cyst adenoma is filled with sticky, thick, gelatinous material. The two conditions that can have ovarian cysts are endometriosis and polycystic ovarian syndrome. Patients with endometriosis may develop ovarian cysts called endometrioma or chocolate cysts. This condition is discussed in detail in another chapter. In this condition, lots of small harmless cysts develop in the ovaries. The cysts developed because of an imbalance of hormones produced by the ovaries. Most ovarian cysts are small and harmless and do not produce any symptoms. Large cysts may cause problems and may have symptoms. Pain and discomfort in the abdomen. This may come and go, but it may last for long periods of time. Some women may notice the pain more after sex. Bloating and swelling in the abdomen. Changes to the periods. Periods may become irregular, painful, heavier or lighter than normal. Needing to go to the toilet more often. Depending on where the cyst is located and its size, it may place pressure on the bladder or bowels. It may also cause pain during bowel movements. Changes in the way the breast and body hair grow. In rare cases, ovarian cysts can cause abnormal amount of hormones to be produced. These hormones can speed up or change the way the breast and body hair grow. Some medical conditions may cause additional symptoms. Endometriosis may cause pelvic pain and low back ache. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, the multiple cysts in the ovaries may cause weight gain and acne. Sometimes ovarian cysts cause more serious problems such as torsion, bursting, cancer. If a cyst is growing on a stem from an ovary, the stem can become twisted. This is called torsion. Torsion stops the blood supply to the cyst and causes a lot of pain in the lower abdomen. The cyst may burst, causing sudden severe lower abdominal pain. The pain felt depends on what the cyst contain, whether it is infected or whether there is any bleeding. Very occasionally, an ovarian cyst is an early form of ovarian cancer. However, ovarian cysts are very common and about 95% are non-cancerous. As most ovarian cysts cause no symptoms, many cysts are diagnosed by chance. It may be diagnosed during a routine examination or when an ultrasound is done for other reasons. If a patient has symptoms suggestive of an ovarian cyst, an abdominal and vaginal examination may be done. The doctor may feel an abnormal swelling which may be a cyst. Tests that may be done are ultrasound, pregnancy test, hormonal test, blood test CA125. An ultrasound scan can confirm an ovarian cyst. An ultrasound scan is safe and painless. It uses sound waves to create images of organs and structures inside the body. The probe of the scanner may be placed on the abdomen to scan the ovaries. A small probe is often placed inside the vagina to scan the ovaries to obtain more detailed images. With an ultrasound, the doctor can see the cyst's shape, size, location and its contents. The content may be fluid-filled, solid or mixed. 
This is an ultrasound picture showing an ovarian cyst. Its contents are dark, indicating that it contained watery fluid. This was a serous cyst adenoma. This cyst content is more mottled in appearance. The whitish areas seen are solid structures resembling bone or teeth. This was a dermoid cyst. The content of this cyst is more mottled in appearance. This was a mucinous cyst adenoma. This large cyst contains solid areas with watery cystic area. This was a cancer of the ovary. Pregnancy test. This test may be done to rule out pregnancy. It is common to have follicular and luteal cysts during pregnancy. Hormone levels may be checked to see if they are hormone-related problems. Cancer antigen 125, or more commonly known as CA125, is done to find out if an ovarian cyst is cancerous. CA125 is found to be high in ovarian cancers. However, in some ovarian cancers, the result is normal. This is due to the fact that some ovarian cancers do not make enough CA125 to be detected in the blood. So in some women, even though the history, physical examination and ultrasound may be suggestive of an ovarian cancer, the CA125 value may be normal. To add to this confusion, some benign diseases such as endometriosis may also have a high CA125 level. This indicates that a woman with a high CA125 need not necessarily have cancer of the ovary. It may be caused by some other benign disease. Non-cancerous causes of high CA125 are more common in women younger than 35 because ovarian cancer is very rare in this age group. Therefore, CA125 test is most often given to women who are older than 35 and when cysts contain solid contents. Treatment will depend on factors such as age, menopausal status, the appearance and size of the cysts from the ultrasound scan and whether there are symptoms. For functional cysts, a watch and wait approach is taken. Functional cysts tend to dissolve over time and treatment is not needed. A repeat ultrasound may be done usually after two menstrual cycles to ensure that cyst has disappeared. In some patients, if the cyst recurs, birth control pills may be prescribed. These pills reduce the hormones that promote growth of cysts and prevent formation of large cysts. Removal of an ovarian cyst may be advised especially if there are symptoms or if the cyst is large. Sometimes removal of the cyst may be necessary to ensure that it is not a cancer. Most cysts can be removed by a laparoscopic or keyhole surgery. Some cysts, especially if cancer is suspected, may require a laparotomy. The type of operation depends on factors such as the type of cyst, the age, complications encountered such as bleeding, rupturing and twisting of the cyst and whether cancer is suspected or to be ruled out. The types of surgery that can be performed are cystectomy, salpingoophorectomy, hysterectomy and bilateral salpingoophorectomy. Cystectomy is the removal of only the cyst and retaining the normal ovarian tissue. This surgery is usually performed in benign ovarian cysts and in young women who want to retain their ovaries for future pregnancy. The advantage of this surgery is that the patient will still have part of the ovary. The disadvantage is that cysts may recur in the same ovary. Sulfingo-oophorectomy is the removal of cysts with the ovary and the fallopian tube. This is usually done when 
The cyst is very large and not much normal ovarian tissue is present. When torsion of the ovary had occurred affecting its blood supply and in early ovarian cancer. The advantage of this surgery is that there will not be any chance of recurrence of cyst in this ovary. The disadvantage is that the patient will be left with only the other ovary. Hysterectomy and bilateral sulfingo-oophorectomy is the removal of the uterus and both the ovaries. This is the preferred surgery in perimenopausal and postmenopausal women with ovarian cyst. It is also done in women with ovarian cancer. All these surgeries can be performed either by laparoscopy or laparotomy. Ovarian cysts are common in women. There are many types of ovarian cysts. Most of the ovarian cysts are benign and uncomplicated. Surgery is indicated if the cysts are persistent, becoming bigger, causes symptoms or if cancer is suspected. Most of the ovarian cysts can be operated using laparoscopic surgery.